Doing great. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Good morning. And how are you, Megan? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Good, good. So um, we're going to be uh, asking some questions here, friends. And if you have any questions that you would like to uh, ask our speakers, feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll try to um, get those in. Uh, just a heads up to our speakers, I just want to let you know there's going to be a pre recorded talk right after us. So I'm going to end us one minute early so that our conversation doesn't get cut off because I don't have control of that. <laughs> okay, great. So, um, uh, let's just jump right in, you know, um, can maybe Gary, if you want to kick us off, um, if you want to speak to, if there's anything about yourself, about your journey here, uh, before we jump into questions, um, that you would like to share, you know, I read some of your bio, but if there's anything that's going on for you now that you'd like to, uh, let us know about. No, absolutely. So, um, as you alluded to, I spent 20 years in the air force, um, split between talent acquisition and recruiting, uh, side of the air force and working on the E3 AWACS as a surveillance radar technician. Um, transitioned out, um, came to the Collins Aerospace through uh, Raytheon Technologies Big Umbrella and uh, joined the SkillBridge program with the Talent Acquisition Department. And after I completed that fellowship, um, I was onboarded onto Collins Aerospace with a full-time um, employment offer. And that definitely eased the stress of the transition, which is one of the biggest things that veterans face uh, once that contract ends and once we make that decision to go ahead and seek that second career. Uh, so that was something that I was very, very appreciative of. And it's definitely an honor. And we'll probably talk about it here in a little bit. But it's an honor to kind of be the program manager of the SkillBridge program and to be able to offer those that kind of comfort blanket and soft landing to as many veterans as possible within Collins Aerospace. Thank you, Gary. And Megan, anything about you uh, that you'd like to share maybe about that transitional time or where you at now? Yeah, so um, when I left the Coast Guard, I just went straight into being a police officer and that didn't really fit my personality. And so like I decided like I ultimately wanted to be an engineer before. So I went back to school on my GI Bill and my second year, I went back for three years full time. I was able to um, get an internship within Collins Aerospace. And so really starting fresh, like I started with knowing nothing about engineering and they really took me under my wing. I got a mentor. And some of the, a lot of the people I work with um, really became family and led me along the way of like learning all of our software programs and modeling and how to do drawings, really the basic foundation of, of everything that I use today now. And so I was an intern for two years while continuing to go to school um, full time. And um, they were able to help me through that transition. And then once I graduated, I, I went to full time. Um, I was in Westford, Massachusetts, where I worked on recognizance systems. Um, so like camera systems, like the YouTube program that take the pictures. Um, and then I've also worked um, some of our space programs, like some um, Artemis stuff, um, doing electronic packaging solutions. Um, and then more recently, I've just moved out here to Everett, Washington to work in our interiors division. So that's really anything that encompasses the inside of an aircraft. That's what I work on. And so the big thing is like, I've, I've got this great network and people that I can rely on. And I built that great foundation in Western Massachusetts. And I really rely on that. And they, they helped me move from not knowing how to be an engineer and teaching me like everything I know now. So was, they were super supportive and it was great experience. That's so awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And it's wonderful to hear about, you know, some words that stood out in there were family and mentorship, you know, these people that are really here to support you. And um, Megan, while, while we're with you, um, maybe you can uh, speak to uh, how uh, Collins Aerospace culture has been uh, similar and maybe perhaps some different from what you've experienced in the military and also maybe as your time as a police officer as well. If you, what are those major like things that you feel are um, transition on, on both sides of the coin there? So I say it's similar in the fact of like, you can move all over the world. I mean, our company is, is worldwide and I've been accepted into our inter program, which is then engineering and technology rotational program. So I have um, a two-year program where I can go anywhere in the world. We get three rotations, um, eight months each. And I mean, I'm talking with people in Australia, um, UK, um, and really just to open up the opportunities. And I think that's similar in the fact that 
you can move all the time, but also in the fact of like, I get to take a personal stake in my professional journey here. When you're in the military, you don't really get a say. I didn't get a say in where I went. Uh, I mean, one of my stations was in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and it's really cold up there. <laughs> but um, I think the, the most important thing is like taking that personal stake in your professional development. I can, I'm empowered to like go and do anything and everything I want. I, I maintain mentorships with senior directors from my last position. I've like I can comfortable reaching out to vice presidents within my company, setting up. Um, I also, we do partnerships within um, Engineers Without Borders and Colons Aerospace and Raytheon Technologies, which is a huge part of like my, my drive and what I wanna do. Like I love giving back. It gives into the public service of like being a pup, like police officer and in, in, uh, in the military, like search and rescue things. So I wanted to find a way to transition that continue that in with my new role and my new skills, my my brain now. Like, so, I mean, for the last three years, we've been working on a water project in Guatemala um, to bring a water distribution system to a community there. And like, I've actually gone there and met the people that were helping. So I think the important thing is like, I'm empowered to do whatever I wanna do within this and um, I can go anywhere in the world. And so, um, I mean, so I've, I've, I've been in, uh, Windsor Lost Connecticut. I've been in Westford, Massachusetts, and I just recently moved out here eight months ago to Everett, Washington. I'm looking at jobs in Australia. So, I mean, it's really the fact of like getting to take a personal stake in whatever you want to do and wherever you want to take it. My career track is to um, get into executive leadership. And so like I work with my mentors to put myself in jobs and positions that will move me into that direction. So it, it's a it's an awesome opportunity and, and and I have a lot of help along the way. Wow, that's truly incredible. And if you end up going to Australia, you're gonna get to switch those seasons. <laughs> <laughs> and Gary, I'd love to hear about for you what your experience has been with uh, things that are similar and and different from what you've experienced in, in the military and your journey into um, Collins Aerospace and with Raytheon. Absolutely. So obviously Megan has a little bit more experience, um, but since I came on to the team, I've been here for, you know, just over six months now. And a lot of the good, um, you know, a lot of the good experiences that you have in the military, you have a family, um, you have that connectedness with a lot of people. Um, however, you know, there is, you know, the rank structure that's kind of in the military. And, you know, if you're an 01, you're not going to be, you know, associating with high level officers, you know, if you're an E2, you're not going to be associating with high level enlisted leaders. And since I have come to Collins, it, it's definitely been kind of a culture shock, um, a good one, um, you know, to have a high level director reach out and say, hey, Gary, how's your day going? And it's just like, oh, my God, you know, the general doesn't, you know, reach out and talk to, you know, the lower ranking people. So it, it really is that family that we have in the military. Um, you know, multiplied uh, to a higher level. Um, your directors really do care about their people. Um, they don't want you to leave. They want you to be happy they, because happy employees are high performing employees. Um, so the directors and the leaders in the different business units really have a vested interest in you being a, you know, satisfied and, you know, fulfilled employee working in that space. And so that's definitely one of the things um, that I have appreciated since coming to this team. Um, overall, just the connectedness um, and the people that are, you know, vested in your improvement, kind of like, you know, Megan getting into this, you know, program that Collins really has a vested interest in her um, future and improvement. And it's every employee um, from an engineer to a technician um, to a business leader. Everybody is trying to, to get those employees to stay within the company and be promoted within. That's fantastic. So I'd love, I love hearing about all of these resources that are available um, through, through, uh, through Collins Aerospace. And we alluded to this a little bit in the, uh, in, in what, in the summary up top was this one Collins culture. So if you could speak to Megan, if you would like to start with this one Collins culture, what, what does that really mean? And what does that mean to a uh, separating veteran? Um, I would say that the one Collins culture really is like our base of like how we do things and then like the, the tools that give us how we can do our jobs. And, uh, and so like we have a core operating system. So it's like customer oriented results and excellence. Right. So these are the programs and, and tools that I have to use within my job 
So like if I'm if I have a problem within my job, it, it gives me a, a resource and a way to implement something to change that by doing root cause analysis, really getting down to what the problem is, um, getting into like taking a personal stake in like how we we'd work as a business and, and being able to from, uh, I mean, I'm still relatively new in my career. Um, I mean, I've been with company for over five years, but I've only been a full-time engineer for a little bit, like three and a half. And um, for someone to go out and do like continuous improvement events under core operating systems is, is like a major um, thing from my standpoint is like, I'm a low man on the totem pole, but like, I am also take a personal stake in being able to push um, and be involved in business outcomes and like, pushing things. So I think the really the one culture is like providing me with the tools to like empower me to go out and like have a personal stake in doing my job and doing it the way um, our customers would like us to do it. And also like being able to like come with like new development ideas and like really coming to, I can like really take this anywhere. I've taken like, they've given me a, a program where I can go and learn how to do patents and like where you come with um, an idea and then you present it and so like they're really giving me the tools like not only um, within my company and my job but like something that I could take somewhere else you know really developing my skills from from the bottom up oh wow that sounds like just great resources all around um, Gary would you like to speak to you know perhaps how in in your you said you've been with uh, for six months is that what you said uh, total between my internship and between my employment yes Awesome. Yeah. And congrats about that internship too, about that soft landing you described. I mean, that's an incredible resource and that's, you know, it sounds like that was quite the opportunity to, to be able to receive that as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I'd love to hear about maybe in your time so far um, with uh, how the culture perhaps, you know, affects you at your job, also with your lifestyle, also maybe with your career journey you're looking ahead to with promotions you know megan spoke to a bit about that for for herself with um the mentorships as well are there things like that that are working for you in, in your career path no absolutely so at the end of my you know internship i had some decisions to make as to you know was i gonna you know stay on with collins or maybe pursue a different you know path of employment and just in that four months that i was with collins it's like wow this is this is where you know, this is where my home is, you know, I just spent 20 years with the Air Force and it's wow, I, I could see myself doing another 20 years here. Um, you have all kinds of options at the end of your transition period, you know, what am I going to do, where am I going to be, but when you find somewhere that feels like hey this is where I belong, this is where I can really develop and go on to that next stage of my career. Um, that is one of the things that definitely attracted me to Collins Aerospace and Raytheon Technologies, you know, our, you know, our parent company. There's so many resources as having, you know, that kind of backing with the corporate America, um, the benefits and everything like that, that we're used to being in the military, but it's really kind of the portability that Megan was hitting on. In the military, you can go anywhere, but you don't really have a whole lot of control. It's wherever you get those orders to. Megan and I can find a position and we apply for it. And if we get accepted to that position, we go to that position. So that's definitely something nice. And then the one Collins culture, I think that that is a entire um, idea. And there's so many different elements of that idea. You know, being in the military, if you showed up to roll call and your hair was, you know, flame red and you had tattoos all over the place, that would not go well. At Collins, we don't really care what you look like. We care about what's in between your ears. And that's one of the things that I really, really respect. You know, if you look at a TV today, our, you know, we just had our elections yesterday and it's 50 50, per, you know, divided on politics. We don't, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what your religion is. It doesn't matter any of your beliefs. If you are contributing to the mission of that team, that is really all that people really care about or respect. So that's definitely a really cool thing um, to be able to embrace the differences and learn about people's cultures, learn about people's beliefs um, and, and be able to respect that person. So that's definitely a really, really cool thing because I sit on the DEI council and it's just really, really awesome to be able to see the organic uh, connections that are made instead of sometimes that forced connection that's forced upon us in an unnatural manner sometimes in the military. So that's definitely an awesome thing about the one Collins culture. 
Oh, I love that. And as you both described, you have the opportunities to go anywhere in the world. So I would hope that you would want to be able to embrace other people that you're working with because they perhaps are from all over. Yeah. And uh, Hunter, I think one thing to add is that like within Collins, we do so many things, landing systems, interiors of aircraft, power and controls, um, uh, recognizance camera systems, like we make the breathing system for the astronauts, we go in spacesuit design, like satellites. Um, I mean, we really like encompass a, a whole lot of things within Collins and like that one Collins culture is like bringing us all together to operate as one. I mean, like I used to work in mission systems and space systems, but I've been able to to get right over and get on the ground and within interiors and aircraft. I, I had no background within interiors of aircraft at all, um, but I've, I've been able to transition um, seamlessly. And so like, that's the thing about the one Collins culture is like, I am able to transition within these business units and, pr and products that we give to our customers. And um, it just shows that we can operate as one, even though we're doing different things at each site. Oh, that's so fantastic. And um, I, you, you mentioned transition a few times just now within the company and, and within uh, One Collins culture that it, you're supporting that. And we're getting some great questions from the chat here that our facilitators are dropping in. And I'll go ahead and uh, read one of these here um, to back up to an earlier transition that we were uh, mentioning a little bit earlier. Someone asked, uh, can you highlight any commonalities between veteran life and a corporate career, something that makes the transition easier to look forward to? Would either of you like to jump in on this question from our audience? Um, yeah, so I will. Um, so, I mean, in terms of like transitioning like business units or getting a job, like I would say it's very similar in terms of move. They helped me sell my house. They helped packed up my whole house. They drove it out to where I was going. I got money each day to, you know, like food per diem, things like that. And they I got to my house out here, unpacked everything, took all the packing boxes and, and my house is pretty much put together. So, um, I mean, that is a hundred percent, um, definitely like the military, except my experience was better <laughs> than a military move. Um, but also like, it just makes that transition like so much easier. It takes out the stress of like having to figure all that out. Um, but also like within my job here, we have mentorship programs um, that really helped me out a big time because I mean, like I said, like I came from a life of, um, I was a BOSA mate in the Coast Guard where I used to drive boats, do search and rescue and tactical operations. And then I was a police officer, so just law enforcement. And then I was getting into this job of mechanical engineering. And so like, I really, absolutely, I mean, I had some classes, but I really knew nothing. Um, and we had a mentorship program where, that I was given a mentor, like as soon as I showed up and I was able to go to them with, um, all my questions or answers or they would come and teach me, but also like I was able to attend courses and to learn about these tools that I was using every day, um, geometric tolerancing and things like that are really important when doing drawings. Um, but then it just expanded. I had like 15 people in my group, um, in Westford and I was able to, I had like technical fellows also that I was able to, to lean on support. A technical fellow is someone that's like above and beyond, like is a teacher. He, they go out and do their own research and things within our company. And they're like the pinnacle of like, like when you talk to them, like you can just tell that their intelligence is on a whole nother level and they get you excited about the products that we do and the things that they do. And so like, I was able to work with him specifically on like some of my programs I was leading. And so like, it's really, they just lay it out to like, I, I would say it's better in military because like kind of when you show up to a new unit, you kind of sometimes just have to figure it out on your own. And where this is like, I was able to be like identified one person that I could go to with all my questions. And then through that, like, he'd be like, oh, go ask this person for help and go ask this person for help. And like, even though I'm not at that um, business unit anymore, like I still stay connected within my mentorship. I still do monthly mentorship meetings with three people from my last unit. And, and so like, I continue to have those relationships, even though I'm not there and they, they, they will reach out to people when I need someone within my, like, I'm looking for new rotations with, within this leadership program. And I'm able to lean on them to sometimes give me contacts or names. Um, and so like, it's really like this, I would say it's better than military. Cause like now you're in this whole world of like, I have a personal stake and I can advocate for myself. 
And really like, it's just getting out there and telling people what you want. And as long as they know what you want, they can give you the tools to get there. Sounds like a lot to look forward to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so we have uh, just a, about eight minutes, seven minutes left. Um, we're getting some other great questions from um, the chat here. So I'll go ahead and ask this one too. Uh, does, uh, do y'all have any specific policies or programs for veterans with physical trauma or disabilities? And we just had a really uh, powerful conversation with Dr. Christine just right before this it was all about healing uh, trauma in that work. Is there, are there resources or does, um, uh, is Raytheon and what Collins like point you in any directions that can be helpful? Uh, absolutely. I'll take this one first, Megan. Um, so as you see over my, my shoulder here, RTX Vets, that's an employee resource group. Um, and, and what that is, is, is there are just thousands and thousands and thousands of employees across the Raytheon technology spectrum. Um, and especially within Collins Aerospace, um, we are probably the largest employer of Raytheon technologies. And we pride ourselves on uh, recruiting veterans um, because they are the end operators of a lot of our equipment. And who better to come into the company to help promote the, the, the products and the services that we do than the former users of it. And you know, by recruiting veterans, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of veterans are transitioning with you know, disabilities. Um, I myself am a, am a disabled veteran um, and, and we do um, have accommodations, reasonable accommodations uh, requests um, for anybody with their disabilities, whether those be you know, visible or invisible uh, disabilities, there are reasonable accommodations um, that are accepted and, and widely accepted within the company. There's also a lot of resources um, getting into, you know, the, the mental health um, and, and the, the, the uh, awareness of um, PTSD and other things like that um, in the veteran space. And there's all kinds of online virtual uh, resources that are provided to um, um, uh, excuse me, Collins uh, employees. We also have a, a, an employee resource group specifically for people with disabilities as well. And so they know all of those resources specifically that can, can help you out. Fantastic. There's so many resources available. I highly encourage you all to check out um, one Collins on our, our, uh, our Collins Aerospace at our uh, Power to Fly website. Uh, look for uh, opportunities there. And um, with just uh, five minutes left, um, you know, I think you, Megan and Gary both, we heard quite a bit about uh, some of what you've been able to achieve already so much. Um, and I'd love to hear a bit about if you could speak to uh, perhaps Megan, if you want to start us off with how does some of the, the military culture translate into the career at Collins Aerospace and also there were so much skills that you learned that clearly you've been able to transfer over. And then also you transitioned to something you said you had no experience in and yet you're able to do it. So there, this must all be linked somehow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so um, within a, being a bosun mate, I maintain boat systems. So like diesel engines, uh, hydraulic systems, um, like uh, boat engines. And so like a lot of that stuff will transition into like what I do now um, within being, uh, a test and validation engineer. I use hydraulic and uh, pneumatic systems to apply forces to interior monuments of, of aircrafts. Um, so within that, like, I have a basic understanding of like how they use are used and like how they work from my previous position. And I've kind of just pulled that into now I have a, a more understanding of like, uh, from a mathematical and science and theory background from school, like how they work and function. And so now it's just really melting the two together of like from personal experience and that that education of like how they work and how I execute things. But like that military culture is like really never going to leave you. You know, you get the assertiveness and the leadership and like those things. And I mean, you clearly stand out within a crowd. Um, and so like just using um, your assertiveness and leadership like to push things like our, our core operating system and continuous improvement is really going to make you stand out within a crowd. And it, and it, it's like I said, it's never going to leave you and it, you're going to be clearly identified as someone that is a leader within the company. And so it's really embodying that and like knowing your worth and like 
using it to its ability. I mean, tell people about it. Be like, I used to do this stuff. It was so cool. Like I used to save people's lives. And now I've transitioned that into, now I do all this volunteer work with Engineers Without Borders. And I essentially, we have a huge network within our corporate social responsibility of like, we're all over the world. Um, with one presentation, I could go out and execute a volunteer project anywhere in the world. You know, like I have this power to affect thousands of people just from my one position within our company. So it, it's really like anything that you want to do and everything you want to do, it's just like just honing in and like finding the job that's right for you. Because like essentially it's like when you go and interview for a company, like you're interviewing them as well. So it's like finding that great fit. And like for me and I think with veterans, I think that this, this they have a, a give and take that is that is perfect. Wow, thank you for that, Megan. So we have just one minute left. So Gary, can you let us know uh, what Collins is doing to reach out to uh, veteran recruitment and also what are the best ways to stay connected with you here in this rapid fire minute before the computers take over to the next talk? <laughs> Definitely, I'm on the clock. All right, so uh, Collins is approaching talent acquisition and recruiting our, our veterans in multiple avenues um, from events like this, um, trying to reach out to separating uh, transitioning members to uh, the SkillBridge program, which is the way that I came on board with Raytheon Technologies and Collins Aerospace. Um, I've actually transitioned into being the program manager for that and tasked with building that out and bringing as many veterans into to the company as possible. Um, to the different outreach projects, um, Student Veterans of America organizations, we travel around and we are trying to get our name out there because they recognize us if they were in the aerospace industry, they know Collins Aerospace, um, but I'd never even thought about working for that company. So it's really just about getting the message out there that we are working for. Thank you so much. We'll drop all the information in the chat for the links to stay connected. Thank you so much. Best of luck to everybody. Thank you for your time and thank you for your service. I really appreciate you both being here.